Please picture a six-year-old boy who, like most boys his age, is a complete mama's boy. One night, while his mother is bathing, she calls out to him and instructs him to bring her a plastic bag. The boy readily obliges her, as he always tries to do anything he can to help his mother. Now imagine the horror he feels when moments later, he sees his mother's body lying limp in a bathtub with that same plastic bag that he had given her over her head. Never would he have helped her that night had he known he'd be assisting her in an attempt to commit suicide. And although my mother survived, I couldn't help but to ask myself, why? And why is a commonly asked question amongst friends and family members after a loved one has committed such an act? Why would they do such a thing? Why didn't they say anything? Why didn't I see this happening? For those of us who found ourselves asking this exact question, I can only assume that we like to believe that we could have done or said something in order to prevent such a horrific act from happening. And sadly, that may be true. But ultimately, the one thing that can prevent a person from doing so on their own is the feeling of hope. And when I came to prison in 2003, I didn't feel that hope. And I thought suicide would be the solution to my problems. I felt it would alleviate the sense of shame and the guilt that I felt from taking someone else's life helped me to avoid the potential fate of having to serve more time in prison than I've been alive, and also to eliminate all thoughts and feelings of never again being able to live a meaningful and purposeful life. I was at my lowest point, but it was the pounding of my heart that stopped me from following through on that act. But still, living with those thoughts and feelings seemed to be impossible. But since that moment, thanks to a friend giving me a typewriter, it has been through typing that has really helped me to deal with such thoughts and feelings, as I will oftentimes type just to relieve my frustration. Now, ironically, in doing so, I found myself even more frustrated at times because I was so horrible at typing. <laughs> you know, it was largely due to the fact that I would type fast because I was concerned with trying to sound like a professional who could type out 100 words a minute, but I wasn't. In fact, I probably made 100 mistakes a minute. But nonetheless, the mistakes that I made didn't matter as much because the letters I typed would never reach their intended recipients, let alone see the light of day. And on this particular day, I was typing out my response into a woman who had told me that being married would be impossible. And as I read over the response, I noticed I misspelled the word impossible. And it read as, I'm possible. Now, I believe that this is one of the few instances where being a horrible typist has its advantages. <laughs> because this typing error allowed me to see the word impossible differently. And this was kind of a big deal, being that that word has been associated with so many negative experiences of my life, including those that made me want to give up. But there was something about seeing the words, I'm possible, although grammatically incorrect, that made me feel as if giving up isn't an option and life is always worth living, despite how bad things may appear to be. So I now associate the words I'm possible with the amazing experience of my life and refer to them as I'm possible moments, simply because I'm possible of turning the seemingly impossible into a golden opportunity, as long as I don't give up. And this is something that everyone can do. And despite my circumstances, I've been fortunate enough to experience quite a few I'm possible moments, including giving this talk. But perhaps the most noteworthy one I've experienced this far has been the meeting of my beautiful and lovely wife, Renee, and getting married in 2014. Thank you. Right. My baby. <laughs> this woman's presence in my life has been completely euphoric. So imagine how excited I was when she revealed to me in June of 2016 that she was pregnant with our child. Nah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was thrilled. You know, I always wanted to be a father. However, the joy I felt was short-lived when a few weeks later, doctors suggested that my wife, who has congestive heart failure, that she should terminate the pregnancy because it'd be impossible for her to survive the birth and our child's life would be in danger as well. My wife and I essentially had to make a life or death decision and we chose life. And as a result, on December 9th, 2016, our nine pound, 11 ounce baby boy was born.
Oh, and by the way, my wife survived the birth as well. <laughs> I believe that this I am possible moment best illustrates what happens if we don't give up and we choose life. Case in point, had I given up in 2003, I wouldn't be able to experience the endless joy that my family brings me today. There are approximately one million people worldwide who commit suicide a year. That's almost one suicide a death every 40 seconds. Sadly, these individuals would never be able to experience the plentiful, impossible moments that life has to offer. Sadly, there are countless others who are either struggling with the thoughts of such act or has already attempted to do so, as people are in desperate need of the feeling of hope that will inspire them to live and remind them that they have a purpose for doing so, despite the impossible moments of trauma, adversity, depression, and hopelessness that they're facing. And I can't help but to think of a young lady who attended our youth assistant program and who was dealing with the impossible moments of her life. And I would now like to read a response that she sent just a few weeks after attending our session. And it reads, I know that I didn't ask any questions during this trip, but I would like to say thank you for these conversations we had. I was really affected by the suicide conversation because that is something that I have dealt with for about nine to 10 years of my life. I had a horrible childhood growing up that affected me physically and mentally. I tried to get help so many times and it never worked. But hearing someone say that I'm worth it and meant for great things really meant a lot to me. I grew up in a really bad home where my parents fought 24 seven and my dad constantly put me down about myself. After years of this, I tried to take my life a few times but failed. I stopped trying to get help because no one understood my situation or the trauma I faced growing up. But for a small second, that conversation we had made me feel the smallest bit of hope in which I haven't felt in a long time. So thank you all for everything. This young lady was in need of the feeling of hope. So I shared with her what I felt the night I decided to give up. It was a feeling that reminded me we have purpose and we should always choose life. And I would now like to share with everyone what that hope was by asking everyone to please place a hand over their hearts. Do you feel that? You know what that's called? It's called our purpose. It's a reminder that we're alive for a reason. Our heartbeat is the hope that we could feel each and every day that should inspire us to live and never give up. Truth is, if what we're going through hasn't caused our heart to stop beating, then neither should we. We must continue to love ourselves and love life. In fact, the next time we're faced with an impossible situation and we're thinking about giving up, we should place a hand over our heart. Be reminded that we have purpose and say to ourselves, I'm possible. Thank you.